Pet therapy is gaining fans in the world of health care. The four-legged workers are helping people better cope with health problems and providing comfort to those who could use a smile. Dr. Susan Anderson is with the University of South Dakota Sanford Medi School of Medicine and Dr. Russ Daly is with South Dakota State University. They are here to tell us how a man's best friend could help improve our health care experience. Thank you both for coming on and talking about this. I know, speaking for myself and for many others, the moment you have a dog around you or any type of animal, immediately you're just emotion, emotional well-being changes and there's just an uplift. Let's start by talking about um, the South Dakota One Health Group. What is this group working toward? Well, uh, the South Dakota One Health Group is basically a collaboration between animal health and human health. And this is something we've been doing for several years now in the state, uh, bringing together people who maybe don't always get to talk to each other about some of the important issues. So for example, in the past we've uh, done seminars and, and meetings bringing people together to talk about things like uh, a, an infectious disease that might infect a, a, a people as well as animals like influenza or rabies or something like this. But for this one we're doing something a little different and looking at that human-animal bond. And so Dr. Susan, when talking about the therapy side of this, how do animals serve that purpose? Well, the animals can serve that purpose in a lot of ways. Uh, sometimes animals will actually be a service animal and will be defined by a task that they do for a patient or an individual. And probably the most familiar to us would be um, a service animal with someone that's visually impaired. But now that is lending itself to uh, patients with diabetes or seizure disorders or other things that animals can actually identify signs and symptoms of something that might be going on with an individual and alert them to that. On the other hand, we have therapy or companion animals and those animals are to help with an individual's well-being. Um, sometimes a patient will have um, a diagnosis or a mental illness such as diabetes or anxiety and the patient will help with that. Or, Pardon me, the animal will help with that. I want to ask both of you now, so we'll start with you, Russ. Why did you get involved with this? What was so interesting to you about this human-animal bond that you got involved? Yeah, well, for me personally, I'm a veterinarian, and so I spent some time in practice. Now I'm with the university uh, doing extension work and some teaching, and also work with the, the actual human health department here in South Dakota as, as a public health veterinarian. So it uh, was always such a natural fit for me to want to uh, look at ways to, to kind of work with the human health uh, professions, even though I, I'd see that in practice too, in my, in my veterinary practice, um, with not just the things that uh, animals can get into that can, can, can affect people, but you saw that bond every day too. So uh, this really felt like a good, uh, a good fit for me to be involved with. And Dr. Anderson, how about you? Well, I'm a family physician and I live in a rural community and being a South Dakotan, animals are so important to us in so many ways. Uh, you know, cattle outnumber us five to one in this state and so uh, it's important that, that we're cognizant of, of the animal industry um, but also um, animals as, as companions and how I got involved with this is actually I direct the Frontier Enrolled Medicine program at the medical school and Dr. Daly invited me to be part of the South Dakota One Health Working Group a couple years ago. Can you explain the human-animal bond and how you stand behind it? Well, actually, um, there's literature to back it up. Um, you know, looking at the literature, Florence Nightingale uh, used animals uh, to help with patients in, in the 1800s and uh, found that, that patients' spirits were, were lifted, uh, they were less likely to get depressed, and if you look at the literature today, um, oxytocin levels um, are raised after um, individuals interact with animals, and so um, we see it in a lot, of, a lot of ways, and we can give examples of uh, patients that are suffering and uh, seem to turn around once they're able to see their dog or their cat that they haven't seen for weeks. Um, so I, I think it's easy to stand behind it and come up with examples where it has a positive effect. Do you have, either one of you, have an example of one that you saw really change a person's life? Well, I, I, in, in the past uh, just year, I've had two instances where I've had uh, once one a niece 
and one, a very close uh, family friend uh, with some very serious uh, problems in the hospital and they had prolonged uh, hospital stays, one due to an infectious disease and one due to an accident. And in both cases, uh, they were able to bring their pets in and that really uh, helped their spirits. And, and just like Dr. Anderson said, it's amazing how that bond is there and it's just an unspoken thing. It really um, it ha has some emotional benefits, but uh, like she was saying, there's probably some more science behind it too. Mm -hmm, definitely. And do you have a example that really left a mark on your heart that you witnessed? Actually, in long-term care, um, a lot of nursing homes will have animals that either visit or they'll have a uh, facility cat or facility dog. And, and I can think of patients that um, maybe seemed a little bit down, uh, weren't adjusting to being into the, in the nursing home, uh, but they formed a relationship with the facility animal and, and that turned things around for them. Can any animal be a therapy or service dog or is it just dogs or what other animals have you experimented with? Well, that's interesting. At our meeting, we're going to actually have a miniature horse that's coming in really? to be a, a ther that works as a therapy animal. But for the most part, we are talking about dogs and cats, uh, although you do hear on the news some of the otter kind of species. Um, one thing is the behavior of the animal. You know, you, you, you want to make sure that uh, it's, some, it, it's an animal that's well-trained and gets along with a lot of different uh, people and uh, can, can deal with a lot of different situations. Uh, as a veterinarian, where I come in is you know, making sure the animal's healthy, uh, that they couldn't pass maybe something on to the uh, uh, patients or that the patients couldn't pass them on to the dogs or the uh, animals. So um, that's where um, I get involved with some of that too. A mini horse, wow, interesting. Yeah. All right, well, we have an event coming up on Thursday. Um, what will be taking place and who would benefit from attending this? The event is uh, part of the South Dakota One Health Working Group Seminars. Uh, we usually have those about twice a year. And this one is focused on the human-animal bond. Um, it's going to be a true uh, dog and pony show because we are going to have uh, <laughs> some therapy dogs. We're also going to have some service dogs that uh, work with uh, patients with chronic disease. And then Toby the therapy horse is going to be there as well. It's uh, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the um, USD Health Science Center here in Sioux Falls. And uh, really anyone that is involved in healthcare might be interested, um, folks involved in the care of animals, students that are um, studying in a, in a healthcare profession may also be interested. And so um, if they are interested, we'd like them to register. We do have um, a website, I believe, that was on the graphic that, that they could use to contact us, but there's no charge to attend. And we're going to have individuals talking about um, some of the policies too, infection control, uh, safety, because we have to make sure that other patients and individuals in a healthcare setting are are safe and comfortable with an animal being there. And then um, also just what does the research show? Um, some of the questions you were asking previously about the benefit of this. All right, all great information. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here today. If you'd like to learn more about our guests today, we have a link on our Kelloland Living page at kelloland.com.